Welcome back to Ask Dr. Clark. In these short videos, well, some short, some a little longer, I answer questions from podcast subscribers, my podcast subscribers, my YouTube subscribers, people I've talked to on the phone in my phone advice sessions, which I'm doing more and more of across the country, people calling in with marital crises questions, and really anyone who wants to send me a question about their marriage crisis, about their personal life, Dr. Clark knows a lot of things with God's help. So if you want to email me your question and have it in one of these videos, potentially, just email directly to my uh, my personal email, David E. Clark, that's Clark with an E on the end, David E. Clark, PhD, at gmail.com. Now, today's question. I, this is a lady. I was married to a, for over 20 years to an abusive man. Well, I talked to a lot of ladies married to abusive men. He never hit me, but he emotionally abused me on a regular basis. I tried everything, but he wouldn't change. Well, you know he wouldn't change, they rarely do. I finally had enough, she says, filed divorce and divorced him. Now he's blaming me for the divorce. Yeah, of course he is. He says, why would a Christian file for divorce? Others, including my own children, she says, are blaming me for the divorce. I feel so guilty, what do I do? Now, my answer is going to be in the form of an excerpt from the brand new book I'm working on right now, which is a book on recovering from divorce. It just happens to fit this question perfectly. I talk to women every day on the phone in your situation. Do not let this abusive, sinful man shame you because that's what he's trying to do. He's a dirt ball and he's a liar. He is continuing to abuse you even after the divorce. And that's exactly what abusers do. Not that you needed confirmation, but the fact is he's confirming your decision to divorce him by continuing to emotionally abuse you. Listen to me. You lived with an abuser for years, in this case, 20 years. He was breaking you down day by day, month by month, year by year. He was damaging you emotionally. Self-esteem shredded, your identity lost, confused, depression, anxiety, and misery were your constant companions. He was damaging you physically. Fatigue, exhaustion, a variety of stress-induced physical problems. I can't tell you how many women I've seen in my therapy office and even working with in my phone advice sessions who after they've divorced their abusive spouse, their, all their physical problems and many of them go away and there's tremendous physical health. That's because an abuser destroys you physically. He was damaging you spiritually. He didn't have the energy to be close to God and to serve him because he was sapping all of it. Your abuser wasn't going to change. He had years of opportunities and blew them all. Most ladies in this situation try seminars, talking to their pastors, seeing a therapist, reading books. It doesn't help because he's not changing. Why should he change when it was always, always your fault? You finally had enough of the damage and you filed and divorced him. It's very common, though sickening, to have many people in your life blame you for the divorce. Your ex certainly blames you because he always blamed you for everything. He lies to others about you and says with a smirk on his narcissistic face, well, she filed. It fits his twisted, stupid narrative perfectly. The assumption is you had no right to file. Oh, yes, you did. More on that in a moment. Your kids, especially your adult kids, may blame you for the divorce. You see, they're used to you taking the blame and he spent years poisoning them. So they're gonna side with him, at least initially. Members of your own family may blame you for the divorce. His family will, because blood goes with blood. We understand that. But some in your own family might also blame you. These family members wanted you to stay married because your divorce is causing them inconvenience. Yeah, well, they don't even care about your misery. Some of your friends may blame you for the divorce. I should say ex-friends because any friend who blames you should be dumped now. These persons are calling you a liar and they don't care about you. You've told them about the abuse, whatever. They don't get it. Your pastor may blame you for the divorce. He'll say you didn't have biblical reason to divorce your spouse. More on that a bit later. Worst of all, you may blame yourself for the divorce. You didn't want to divorce. You simply had no choice, but you still blame yourself. 
Your abusive ex is still in your head. Part of the recovery process in this new book I'm working on is going to be to help you get your ex out of your head and move forward. These persons that blame you did not see all the pain and carnage your abuser caused you. Even your kids don't get it. They were shielded from it by you, probably, as much as you could to protect them. These people expected you to continue to be the good wife and stay in the marriage no matter what. All they can see is that you filed. You broke the rules for Christian wives, not the biblical rules, and that's the good news for you, but the old school Christian community rules. You were supposed, which are you were supposed to stay married, tolerate his abuse, and shut up. That's all the church really wants you to do, many churches. Of course, in many parts of the Christian community, even if your abusive ex had filed on you, the divorce would still be your fault. In many churches, it's always the wife's fault. And maybe your lying ex has convinced them it's your fault. Most abusers are very persuasive, brilliant liars. They come across as very sincere because they believe their own lies. You know what I say? Of course you filed for divorce. Of course you divorced your abuser. That was a healthy and yes, a biblical thing to do. He was destroying you and destroying everything precious to you. And he was never going to stop his abusive behavior. Do you think for a moment that God would want you to continue to be destroyed? No, he wouldn't. Other people might, not God. Again, I say not that you need confirmation, but his continued uh, efforts to blame you and make you suffer confirm that divorcing him was the right action. He destroyed the marriage, not you. He ended the marriage, not you. You simply formalized what he had already done. Ongoing, listen to this, this is important, uh, and the church doesn't get this yet. We're starting to see a little bit of movement towards this, but not too much yet. Ongoing chronic emotional abuse is, in fact, a biblical reason for divorce. It absolutely is. More on this. I'll explain this more in the book that I'm writing right now, but I'm telling you it is. I've been to two seminaries. I graduated from both of them, and I know what I'm talking about. God is fine with your decision to divorce your abuser. Now, God does hate divorce. We see that in Malachi 2.16, but there are marriages that need to end in divorce. Abusive marriages are in this category. So stop beating yourself up for the divorce. Stop allowing your stupid, mean, lying, vicious, abusive ex to blame you for the divorce. Stop allowing others to blame you for the divorce. Here's what I want you to say to those who have the nerve to blame you for divorcing your abuser. I don't care who it is, here's what you're gonna say. Now, say nothing to your ex. That's pearls before swine and a complete waste of time. And he, these, kind of, these abusers love it when they know they're making you suffer. Ignore him completely. I want you to give these responses or something like it to others, I don't care who they are, who are blaming you for divorcing your abuser. You, and I want you to be sharp and I want you to be assertive. Because if you're not, you're taking more abuse and you've had enough of that. Here's, here's things you can say. So, you'd prefer me staying in the marriage and being destroyed? You see, you put it back on them. That's what they're saying to you. Or you can say this, how many more years of destructive abuse do you think I should have endured? Give me a number. It'll make them feel awkward. Good, we want them to feel awkward. Another two years, another five years, another 25 years of a destructive abuse. Is that what you have me do? Or you can say briefly, I did file. God's good with it and so am I. And you can also add this, I've taken enough emotional abuse in my life. I'm not taking any more. Never blame me for the divorce again. Firm, assertive. Like you don't say these things for the other person's sake. Frankly, they're probably too dumb to get it. Although these responses should shut them up and that will be helpful. Because once you lay this on them, they're probably not gonna bring it up again. They can still think it's your fault, who cares? You don't wanna keep hearing it. You say these things for yourself to empower yourself, to speak the truth and to not allow more abuse. You've had enough of that. And frankly, God thinks you've had enough of it. Now, four things as I close. One, I want you to get my book, Enough is Enough, How to Leave an Abusive Relationship. It will confirm that you made the correct choice, the biblical choice to divorce your abuser. Now, I never recommend divorce. That's not my business. That's God's business and your business. But before God, with an abusive spouse, you tried everything else. Yeah, he's okay with your divorce. Two, 
If you need help getting rid of your false guilt, healing, and getting into recovery from your divorce, and many ladies do, and even some men, you can contact me. We can do a phone advice session or two. I do these throughout the week. Uh, David E. Clark, PhD.com is, is the place to go uh, for even a couple of sessions can get you going in the right direction in terms of you talking through your issues and me helping you get on the right track. Three, I'm asking you for your help, your input, and this is important to me uh, as I write this new book on divorce recovery. Uh, of course, I've worked with divorced people for years and I've got, a, I've got my outline, but I, I'm still gathering information because I wanna cover every topic the right way. If you divorced your abuser or if your spouse divorced you for non-biblical reasons, you've been through a divorce, email me topics you'd like me to cover in my book. Even those of you who, who sin terribly and your spouse divorced you for biblical reason and you, you're, and you feel shame and guilt, you're trying to struggle. Again, whatever your situation, send me the topics you'd like me to cover in this new book. That way I can cover all the bases and that input will help me. So those of you in my community, email me topics you'd like me to cover in this recovery from divorce book. And again, to my email address, David E. Clark, Clark with any, David E. Clark, PhD at gmail.com. And then finally for, if you're benefiting from these videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel and tap the like button. Uh, this will help us grow our audience and help more spouses in crisis. So until the next Ask Dr. Clark video, Dr. David E. Clark, Signing off.